Okay, what I thought we'd like to take a look at today is the Glucomin ARIO meter. The thing that most draws me to this meter is the fact that it's NFC compatible, so that uh, you can download your your uh, readings to your mobile phone um, without the need for cables. Um, obviously that's only working with Android phones at the moment. One of the other things um, that interests me about this meter is that in the listing here, um, it is ISO accuracy, which is obviously a standard that has been set for the accuracy of these meters, um, and most of the main brands now conform to this, so it gives you a sense of security that your, your meter should function um, within acceptable parameters. Um, but also for me, um, DVLA memory is quite important. Um, it means that there's enough space on the meter to store at least three months worth of readings, um, which for me, um, because I've, I've got um, a lorry license and I have to have my uh, driving license renewed every 12 months and I have to see a consultant to, to have that signed off, they want to see three months worth of continuous readings. Um, this meter actually can hold uh, 730 readings, I think it is. Um, uh, diabetes remote control literally just means that you can email your results if you're, you're using the app. Um, and like most other meters, you can um, add markers for before and after meals. Um, no, no code. Um, most meters conform to that nowadays. So um, let's move on to um, taking a look in the box. So let's just uh, open the box up. Right, it's probably the same as as most others. There's a transportation case for it, which if we open up um, is actually quite well laid out. There's space, a plastic clip here for the meter to go into. Uh, space to write your name, address and mobile number. Uh, test strip pot can go in there. I expect the um, Lancet device will fit in there and just a little pocket to, to keep a few Lancets in um, and we're done. Uh, in the rest of the box so there's there's the meter still got a label on it we'll take a look at that in a minute. Okay the box is now empty there's uh, 10 test strips Okay, uh, I don't know whether you can see here, I've already got 150 more test strips. Um, the doctor was quite happy to, to prescribe the test strips to me um, because I think they're cheaper than, than um, most of the Bayer test strips are. There's a Lancet device in there with probably 10 Lancets and there's what they call an alternative site tester. It's just a, a clear end for the Lancet plastic tray that the uh, meter was stored in, so that can go. Um, a quick start guide, um, which covers um, just the basics of doing a blood test. Okay, that's literally it. And here is the form that I used to give to the doctor to um, ask for my test strips. Um, what I did was I, I ticked just the uh, sensors um, and I actually wrote 150 strips afterwards because that's what I'm allowed a month. I put my name and signed it but I also added in here just my name and address just so that they had no no trouble um, finding my records. Okay that's just the instructions for the Lancet device. Um, quick guide on the use of the NFC function, but I'll go through that. There's a logbook, but to be honest, one of the reasons you probably want this meter is because of the uh, the compatibility with a smartphone. So who needs one of those? Um, and some slightly more in-depth instructions on setting up your meter. So let's take a look around the meter to start off with. It's pure. Pull that label off, just a dummy screen on there. Now, just for comparison purposes, I'll hold it next to 
um, my Bayer Contour next. Okay, so it's slightly shorter, but obviously slightly fatter. Thickness is about the same, and weighs weighs about the same. Okay, test strip port on the top. On the back is a push button here, which you can use to eject um, the test strips. Um, on and memory button on the side, and then up and down buttons. And on the base is just a port that you can connect to the computer with. Seems a little bit of an odd choice. This uses like a, a headphone jack. Um, so they have to send you a USB cable um, that has a, a COM port um, hardware in it. Um, so it seems a little bit odd to me. Surely it would have been cheaper to just stick a, a USB port on the bottom and then your battery compartment on the back so so nothing too too unusual there I do have one of the USB cables for downloading um, it does work with Mac or PC I'll show you that in a second like I say you know surely it costs more to to produce one of these cables and it uh, does just to put a USB socket on the bottom of the, the meter itself Okay, so one of the first things that you'll want to do when you get any meter is just check that uh, obviously the date and time is correct. Um, on this meter you press and hold the uh, power button on the side. The meter will start up, it will say set. Okay, um, the little clock indicator is flashing there, not too sure whether you can see it too well. If you use the up and down arrows that will allow you to go through and set the different things. At the moment um, the time, date and time is actually within two minutes of correct, it's just running two minutes fast. So um, uh, I'll um, go in on the time there which is flashing. So that allows to set the date, first press, second press. Um, the day and month and then you can choose between 24 hour and 12 hours and then you can go in and set set the time I'm going to set that back two minutes press OK now you can uh, scroll through here um, there's a little alarm, alarm clock symbol there you can set four, four alarms on it um, it's audible alarm it does work OK I have tried it there is a beeper um, for certain functions so you can turn that on and off you can set um, high and low hypo, hypo and hyper alarms so um, well I say alarms it's just markers um, really so you can turn that on and off um, literally and then you can set a level that you want 3.9 for me seems okay and if I go up again then you can set a hyper alarm or alert and I think um, for me I'll set that about 13.5 okay and the last thing is whether NFC is on or off if you're going to use this with a smartphone you want to use NFC so go in there and turn that on okay I'm pressing and holding the power button We'll now turn that back off, so we'll move on to doing a simple little test. Okay, so here's the Lansing device and the Lancet that I've got out. So uh, it's quite simple like most others. It'll be a pull back and a push on the button, but first screw off the top. Take off. All right, let's push the Lancet in first. Twist off the cap and it is a super fine little needle that's, that's on the front of there. It's one of the smallest of Lancet needles that I've ever seen. Okay, screw this back together. So that's our Lancet device all re almost ready. I'm going to turn it up to a setting of three because I don't normally get enough blood otherwise. So we take a test strip. Okay. Uh, what I quite like about these pots is there's obviously some sort of silica gel or something in the top to keep your, your strips dry, I would guess. They are quite a chunky strip. We'll take a comparison of those next to a, a bare one in a second. 
No, in fact, let's do that now. So there's a contour next test strip, which is a fair bit shorter and narrower. Okay. So let's move on to taking a test. So literally it is as simple as push that in the top, a little blood drop symbol will appear here asking you to, to get the blood. So we take our Lancet device, I'll see if I can extract enough from my little finger here, which it looks as though I do, and literally let's take that blood up. Now, unlike the Bayer and some of the other meters, you do have to make sure you get enough blood on. You don't get a second chance at it. Um, I've got a reading of 16.2 here, so I've been a very naughty boy. But that's the little hyper alert there that I was on about. So that stores it in, in your meter. And again, hypo if you get one. One nice little thing is that if you don't want to um, risk getting blood on your fingers, which really... There's enough space there to grab the strip without without getting it. But if you've got really chunky fingers, then this button on the back you can press and the meat and the strip will just drop out and the meter will turn off. You can go back and review your tests. Um, if you press and hold the power button for about a second just to bring the meter on. Obviously not pressing quite enough for you. There we go, it'll open up in memory. You can use the up and down arrows to scroll through your recent readings. There we go. So, unlike some meters, it can read above 27. Um, by pressing the power button again, you can get your one day average, seven day average, and 14 day average. Now, as I just had quite a high reading, I'm going to um, just do a test on my Bayer, just to see how the the meetings, the readings compare. Um, you must remember that there's always going to be a certain amount of tolerance in these things, so I wouldn't expect an exact reading, particularly not in the higher levels. It says 13.6. Now I think the tolerance they're allowed to have um, is about 10%. Well, you know, that sort of falls within that, roughly. I mean, they're supposed to be more accurate below the 7. Um, but for me, you know, irrespective of what reading I take, I'm running high and I need to bring my levels down. The most interesting part for me though is that you can literally um, install the Glucolog Light software, click on the download results button and literally hold your meter to the back, there you go, it's downloaded the results, as easy as that, and then you can go across to your logbook and there is my last reading at the top which I took a second ago and you can add markers here if you want and you can add comments um, what you've eaten and you, you can add insulin intake if you want um, this can be paired up to work with Samsung S Health if you wish um, you can set uh, different periods of the the day in there whether you want to use them so meal times those sorts of things and then um, within the app itself uh, you've got um, your diary line graphs of your readings and changes to um, bar graphs, dot graphs if you wish and from here you can also email the results if you wish by clicking that button up there 
So that's all relatively nice and easy. Uh, let's just take a look at a couple of other bits. Okay, this is my Mac. You can um, download and install the Glucolog app onto a Mac or a PC. Uh, my firewall just asked me if I want it to be able to connect to the internet. I do, I want it to be able to check for updates. Plug the USB cable into the side of the laptop. Connect the meter to the cable, comes up and says PC. And then down here on the screen I can click the, the download button. Okay, it's trying to download there. Uh, it's come up and said reception finished here. So hopefully, there we go. Um, it's got a print off report if I want to use it. But I can close that. Up here is the recent tests that I've taken. The highlighted red ones um, are obviously the ones that are set above my threshold for a hyper. Um, I'm guessing that you'll get a similar thing for a hypo, not that I've had one of those yet, so can't test that little bar graph over here, and you can change the time periods. There are different reports and and things that you can can run through. Uh, it takes a little while to load on on my Mac here, but it does all work. Obviously, there's a PC version for this, and there are other apps that you can use like SI Diary and a and a few others that are available to download for the PC. So um, all in all I'm relatively impressed with um, this meter. Um, it's a shame. Um, Apple, um, whilst it's got uh, in this iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, um, it's got an NFC chip in it. Um, it uh, doesn't allow you to, to use things like this yet because they haven't opened the um, the software libraries to to developers to be able to use it is pretty much reserved for Apple Pay at the moment. Um, but I would hope in the future that uh, you can use it. Um, Glucoman themselves do actually sell a Bluetooth module that you can connect to the bottom and download your your results to your iPhone using Bluetooth. Um, one other little thing that disappoints me is that um, Gluco log on on the uh, Mac or PC and Glucolog on your phone don't actually synchronize so if you download onto the phone it doesn't automatically update your PC version you have to download it there as well so that's a little bit disappointing um, last thing we didn't really take a look at is that the meter does clip in in there quite nicely and then so that, that all closes in there quite nicely. It's quite nice that they've offset these. You know, I don't like scratching my meters. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, you know, with my technology, I don't like it to get damaged. That's all quite nice, quite slim, easy to carry. It's got a little belt loop on the back. So, you know, if you only need to carry a meter around, then, you know, it's an ideal little case. For me, I have to carry insulin and, and various other bits, so you know this case isn't going to get much lose, use. But in general, um, I actually quite like the meter. Um, you know, I think they've they thought about um, quite a few aspects and and how it's going to work. Um, and I'm interested to see what future meters they'll come up with. So you can get uh, your meter by going to Glucoman. Dot co dot uk. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, mine arrived within 24 hours. Uh, it had 10 test strips in it ready to go. So um, why don't you try yours?